Hello guys, uh, I'm going to make a quick video to show you some basic functionality in Topocon 3 in its current state, which is beta. Uh, because so many of you ask me during the streams uh, how to do that or how to do that, and some of you have no knowledge from Topogon 2, so you don't really understand how it works. You come from, you know, uh, other Retopo tools like <coughs> Maya Max or I don't know, 3D code, even Garden Blender. So uh, I'm going to show you how to easily navigate through the menus and uh, what tools are cool and what not. Okay, so for for those of you who, who come from Topogon 2, you, you'll notice that uh, the interface is obviously different. I find it as a big improvement. Right? Looks much more natural and uh, slick. You have now an outliner here and an inspector where you're going to have all the options for your meshes. But I'm going to show that uh, in a second uh, depending on what we have open. Right? So uh, you have these three buttons which is new scene, save and uh, this one for loading references and uh, meshes or scene. So I'm going to open up a mesh. I'm going to open the barbarian head that I gave to Christy uh, for for that promo video of the patch tool so now you you will see that we have a contextual uh, main well some contextual buttons here that appear depending on what you have opened or what tool you're using so it's uh, it's going to tell you about the the outline the bounding box the vertex color if it's there right the smooth shader uh, hard edged the wireframe and the masks right for those who come from topogon 2 this was like a very big problem right because in topogon 2 you're used to open your mesh and you'll be able to start instantly working on your stuff while now uh, you have here only two buttons right which is the mask button and the the guides button right so if we take the mask button uh, we can mask some area. Let's do exactly like in that video and take the goddamn mirror, right? Uh, you can mask an area, and uh, if you you look here, right in the inspector, now we have some options happening, right? We have for the masking to to invert it and whatnot, to blur it, to clear it, uh, whatnot. We have retopologize, which will retopologize in this case the whole head. Uh, lower you have decimation, which again is gonna do the whole thing. Uh, you have remesh, which is uh, I'm gonna remesh your your stuff, automatic uh, remeshing stuff. And we have glue, which I honestly have no clue what it's doing. I think it's some sort of a boolean. I never tried it, and we have extract. So. Like in, if you watched that video, right, you've seen that Christy was selecting the year, he would hit uh, extract mast, which will take us to something like this. But, you know, if you go now and you try uh, remesh it or uh, uh, automatic retopo, right, uh, this will uh, retopo the whole head because what you have here, it's only a preview, right? Uh, if you change here from show to result to original or both, right? You can see that you already has the whole uh, uh, the whole head, right? So if you want to to actually be able to retop only this part, you need to export mesh, which will generate a mesh uh, on the drive, right? And it's gonna automatically load it to your scene, right? So now, uh, if you look at this, right? We have another reference opened here, right? We have the head, and now we have the the year separated, right? And now you can actually retopple this. You now you can go and uh, say a number of polygons, let's say I don't know, 400 for face count. Uh, of course, you can use guidelines, you can use curvature, uh, but I, I I think in most of the cases, uh, the actual default settings are are doing quite a good job. So again, like you press retopo, in case you want uh, to have some automatic retopo, this will give you a result like this, right? which I find it like really, really clean. And compared to, to what you got in uh, zero measure, it's uh, 
by far superior. But again, this is just like in the case of, of masking, right? It's just a, res uh, a preview, right? To actually have this as a mesh, right? You have to create a scene mesh, right? And it will convert this into actual geometry that you can work on. I find this incredibly amazing. Uh, I, I think I'll definitely give it a go for for some of the stuff that I'm working on, right? Very, very cool feature uh, that I will uh, definitely dive deeper into uh, during the the next character retopping. Okay, so uh, as you can see, like the, the low poly, it's connected to the year, right? So if I hide the year, it's gonna hide the low poly also, but you can always uh, move uh, your assets, right? So I will be able to, to hide the year, but I'll still have uh, the low poly here in the head group, right? Just like in any other outliner with grouping and whatnot. Again, the as I was saying, like if you go here, let me clear this uh, this masking, right? It's kind of bothering me. If you come from Topogon two, right, you will uh, you will be very uh, bothered by the fact that you cannot work directly on your stuff, right? You only have like the the mask and the guidelines, right? Which will you will draw some guides on on your mesh for retopoing purposes or for having some guides to use uh, for modeling. The problem is that uh, a, a lot of people got stuck in this this part where, wait, but now how do I do retopo, you know? Well, all you have to do is to press the plus button, which is create mesh, right? So at this point, this is creating a new mesh here. And now you have the tools that are, half of them are similar to what you had in, in Topogon 2, right? Uh, let me see how I get the other way of this grid, right? Again, another uh, thing that you have uh, now, it's uh, obviously the Pi menu, right? The Pi menu, it's uh, contextual also, right? If I'm on the high poly, right? The Pi menu is gonna show me like the options here are the options here, right? Uh, and you're gonna have some uh, navigation stuff, right? If you're in a, a low poly object, right, the menus will change uh, dependent on on what you're doing. So for those who come from Maya, I think this is a very uh, good improvement. I'm not the biggest fan of Pi menus, so I'm rarely going to use them. I'm more into shortcuts and whatnot, right? So uh, let's talk a little bit about the basic tools, right? Like uh, you have, you know, simple edit and simple create. These are like from Topogon 2. Uh, not much to say about it. Like, make sure you look up in this stuff, right? You look at the back faces, you look at uh, sim transform and sim select, right? If you work uh, with symmetry, right? And you create something like this. Uh, if you have sim select, right, you can actually select now vertices or edges or whatever and delete it which was a big problem uh why this didn't work i think uh projection is it's a bit weird but in general you can um, you can work with symmetry right and you can select and delete stuff uh in ways you could not do in topogon 2. delete all, all of this right uh, what else so selection, exclusive symmetry, you know, uh, the type of selecting, right? Circle, mark, lasso, or brush, right? You, you very, very simple stuff. You know, just as in Topogon 2, if you right click, you're gonna switch in between uh, simple select and simple edit. While, you know, in, uh, in simple create, uh, you have, you know, the, the ability to to create geometry now if you see here by default you have the auto select on which basically is gonna uh, let me remove the symmetry it's gonna make stuff like this right if you go close to a point i'm not holding my hand on anything right i'm only using the mouse if you're gonna go on a point it's gonna connect there if you're all gonna be on the middle of the edge it's gonna put a point in the middle of the edge uh, by itself right without you uh, being required to hold control and shift as 
uh, you used to do in uh, in Topogon 2, which I don't really dig, right? So I usually turn that off, and I, I prefer to hold my control to go to points and shift to go into the middle, because sometimes the snap distance might might go places and uh, might select an edge instead of, uh, of a vert, and it's going to drive me nuts, right? Uh, you also have the option to uh, to make faces, right? Well, uh, where you you're making stuff just like this, right? On the on the go, right? Other than that, you know, simple create. It's a very simple tool. Then we have the next tool is the draw tool, shortcut D again. Uh, some of you guys uh, were used to to play with this tool, right? I never really used it. I don't know exactly why, uh, but again, you know, you just generate uh, geometry based on what you're drawing on and the intersections. Uh, there, is, there are some options with loft and uh, sweep, but I cannot really tell about them because I never spent time digging into them. I suggest you to go to the Topogon 2 videos because the functionality should be uh, pretty much the same as in uh, in Topogon 2. So I I'm, I was not too much into this. Well, now we have the bridge tool. Like the bridge tool, obviously, you know. Uh, come on, it's like this, right? Where you connect some edges. If you're in the edge mode, right? If you're on the face mode, then it's going to try to connect faces, right? Like, uh, let me delete this so we can uh, we can go back to bridge, right? If you're in face mode, you can create faces in between uh, parts, right? If you're uh, in freehand lines, and this I think it's one of the most cool features, right? You will see that wherever I have the mouse, you have a line that connects to a vertex that becomes red. So this is the starting point. You hold on the sh uh, the click, right, and you start building up, you know, faces on the go. I find this like a really really helpful tool to build up fast your geometry, uh, depending on what you're trying to to achieve, right? Uh, straight lines is basically the same thing as freehand lines, right? It's gonna go to to a point. The only difference is this is made mostly for hard surface stuff. Where you have to create like straight lines, right? So you're gonna put a straight line, and it's gonna create, you know, it's gonna project it on your uh, your low, low high poly model. This should be like really, really uh, helpful when you have to uh, to close down some uh, some hard surface geometry without uh, bothering about the, the the connections here. The next tool is the slide tool. The slide tool, and because we're here, I want to talk a little bit about the selection, right? So in selection, uh, when you're in the edit, simple edit mode, you can see the mouse, uh, if you hold it on top of an edge, right? You have an R, or if you go closer to the, to the uh, end of the edge, right, you have an L, right? If you're on R and you double click, you're going to select a ring. If you're uh, on an edge where it says L, right, it's going to select a loop. Why is this important? It's because if you double click, you select a ring, then you hold down shift, right, and you go with the middle mouse button where it says L, L is going to introduce a loop, right? You hold the middle uh, mouse, right, and you're going to introduce a loop. Or if you select a ring and you shift middle click in the middle, is gonna collapse. On uh, if you're on a loop and you shift uh, middle click where it says L, sorry, where it says R, it's just gonna remove the loop and also the vertices that you have there. Because if you're just gonna press delete here, right on this edge, it's gonna leave the the points behind, right? So if you're you're here on the R and you shift middle click, it's gonna uh, remove that loop and it's gonna make your life way easier, right? course if you cannot remove the whole loop it's going to end up like this and you'll just have to close it down manually 
uh, again in simple edit uh, if you hold down control you see the closest vertex will get activated and this is just basic welding for four points so back to to the slide tool the slide tool works like this uh, you you select a loop right you hold drag up uh, a button and you have a natural slide on the on the edges that's going to project on your on your mesh wherever it is right this is a a decent tool that uh, you can use uh, in certain condition and can give you some very good results if you need to slide down your uh, your loops you can use multiple loops and you're not limited by come on are you limited by one well apparently you are or do I need to no I think you're limited to one single uh, loop at a time the next tool is the tubes tool if you guys seen this in uh, uh, in Topogon 2 you know it's a it's a great amazing tool but uh, right now it has some limitations because it's not really uh, it's only working with closed uh, surfaces right and why it's working with closed sur surfaces it's uh, because of the fact that Christy implemented uh, the tubes to work for example if you're making a hand and you're gonna make one finger right it's only gonna go on the first surface that it encounters right and it, you you will be able to to generate topology for uh, for that hand or for that finger without going all around the, the mesh right uh, this brings some problems when you have you know uh, like in my workflow I work with clothing that where the patterns are uh, detached one from another right and that's how they are in the high poly so if for example if I want to make, use the loops around the, the arm right now it's not working uh, because it's gonna go on uh, around the first uh, mesh that he's gonna encounter the obviously uh, there are workarounds for that you can uh, dynamesh your your high poly a little bit to make sure you uh, you connect all the surfaces then obviously it's gonna go all around it's still a very good tool can be used in uh, in so many situations now the next tool uh, it's uh, the brush the brush comes with the you know uh, move relax inflate standard screen project conform pinch and select uh, the brush is just like any other brush in the world right you move stuff around and it's gonna automatically project to to your mesh you hold down shift it's automatically gonna go into relax mode right like in in zbrush right it's gonna relax and it's gonna keep uh, the stuff uh, on the surface so it's also gonna do conform instantly uh, you can select you know keep border so you're not gonna destroy the border that you created especially if you're working with symmetrical lines and whatnot uh, you have strength you have fall off you have inflate which is gonna inflate this uh, let's put a little bit more uh, strength right it's gonna inflate the mesh away from the the surface so let's say you can uh, conform it back to to the geometry that you have on your high poly uh, the thing is uh, you have screen project and conform right so uh, the difference between this and let's go back to this is that screen project will project this point directly uh, perpendicular to your screen right so if I click this you'll see it's gonna went on the right side right and uh, while the conform even if I'm like this is going to go on the normal of the vertex right back to the surface that we had underneath the pinch it's obviously pinch like in zbrush if you are accustomed with that it's going to do the same here select is just going to select uh, vertices basic basic uh, functionality but really uh, powerful we have uh, the extrude the extrude had some issues uh, with my 4k monitor uh, before and I don't know if uh, Christy actually uh, fixed this I think he did yeah so you basically select some edges and you can extrude them you have different algorithms to 
uh, to extrude this, right? Like going straight and then project the vertices uh, to the surface in screen mode, or uh, you can even go uh, pre move, which is gonna go places, right? And it's gonna just stay in the air and not project at all. Uh, we have the pizza tool, I call it, which is the slice. Uh, the slice tool will uh, just gonna make a slice and it's gonna try to uh, make triangles everywhere and close your mesh except the starting and uh, ending point unless it's like creating automatically quads but if you're gonna have like here uh, five edges uh, geometry you're gonna have to connect it manually uh, this tool works well but if you have geometry that's behind right it's going to cut that uh, also right. you're going to use the slice uh, wait how come it didn't cut it let me, let me make sure oh yeah so you see if you cut here it's going to cut on the other side also um, in some beta build, this also had a back face, but apparently Christy removed it from some reason. I'm gonna have to talk with him exactly why that happened. Uh, the next tool is the cut tool. Let me undo some of these uh, crazy cuts that I put. Right, the the cut tool it's a very strong tool. Right, you can actually uh, do some crazy cuts in your geometry, and uh, he will create automatic uh, topology for it trying to relax the corner and make sure that you don't have those crazy polygons you know where the vertex remain like this right and when uh, your software might make a triangulation like this and you're going to get overlap face right this is the uh, the default with the relax but you can uh, you can tell it to to ditch that right and it's going to make a nice cut and it's going to keep things straight like this which i don't really suggest because uh, in the end, I think you uh, you will need to actually connect these points like this, right? To have a proper cut without problems. Um, I think you can say to not make quads. I never tried it, so it will close up with the with triangles where possible, right? But it's uh, it's like really cool to to place a straight based geometry and you can use this to to cut your tool without fearing that you have issues on the back side right so for example if you're doing some clothing like we are so often do for characters and you you make a, a good animation topology first and then you start cutting for for the folding this is a very good tool to uh, to use for that because it's going to be very easy to cut exactly on your on your folding uh, we have a circle tool. This will be very beneficial for people who are uh, making a hard surface, right? Uh, you can uh, control and scroll to to add more uh, divisions, right? You can shift scroll to add more uh, steps in the geometry inside. Uh, and then you just press enter. It's going to create the geometry there and it's going to project on your on your stuff. So if you have something like buttons or you know that should be in the same uh, topology as the clothing it's very easy to create uh, geometry to support them in uh, in silhouette and the last one which is uh, by far my uh, my favorite tool in topogon 3 it's uh, it's the patch tool the patch tool who comes with uh, let me clear them all with some uh, really really nice features right so the patch tool I, I think you already seen it right you're just drawing some guidelines right based on what you're trying to do and he's gonna generate automatic topology if you're going on on top of a line and you hold down control you can change the number of the points right which uh, gonna change the way the the algorithm works right come on I am not working uh, if you control and right click on this uh, point in the middle right and then you hold down control and you scroll you can change how the algorithm is creating the the topology inside right it's going to try to 
to find a different path for uh, generating the non-uniform uh, geometry. This is like really, really a uh, powerful tool because you can create patches that are from two edges, right? And it's gonna generate geometry from them. You can create patches from three edges, right? It's gonna create geometry from them. Four edges we've already seen. We, you can have even five or even six, right? So in my opinion, uh, being able to connect all this craziness, right? It's uh, really, really helpful. The cool stuff is that you can actually uh, start the patch tool like this. Sorry. Come on, why? I think I changed something in my settings. It's not jumping anymore on my... Let me check. Edit preferences. Snap tolerance. It's 50. Uh, let's put it to 80 or something. It's not really snapping on my uh, my geometry that wait a second. Why is zooming so inwards? I suppose it's a bug. As I said, this is still uh, very much in beta, right? But for the patch tool, you can start uh, because of this crazy zoom. I cannot select the stuff. That's weird. Let me make a new scene and see if we can reset the whole zoom craziness. Uh, nope. Wrong. Wrong reference. This, this one. As I said, here you can go and and delete your meshes or you can add meshes or whatever right we're gonna make a new tool then we're gonna go with patch as I was saying like all the uh, depending on what tool you're you're into uh, or if you're on the high poly or low poly the menus here will change they are pretty much the same things that you're gonna find here or uh, that you will find you know in the menus here so let's make a patch as I was saying, like you can continue from from this, right? If you go from one point to another, it will turn red. So you can continue the patch tool uh, from that point, right? Which I find it uh, really helpful. Obviously, you can uh, use multiple uh, patches, multiple angles, and do uh, whatever you can think of, to be honest. For example, we want to take this, like this, and whatnot. I can just generate geometry on the go. So, guys, this is pretty much the basics for for Topogon. There are many other options, like you know, uh, working with symmetry. The patch tools, for example, has uh, the ability to draw straight lines uh, if you're working on the hard surface, and you're gonna make like hard uh, straight lines. Uh, you can say to not allow triangles, so in case you have uh, a patch that it's not working fine because you removed one point here, right? It's going to generate a geometry like this, which will uh, tell you that probably you will have a triangle there, and maybe you don't want them. Uh, you can optimize for quads. Uh, there's another cool trick for patches. Uh, cool trick. There's another uh, feature for patches, which I find really useful. Like if you generate a patch, let's say you put like, a number of edges there, uh, and you go space default subdivs, it's going to read the number of points you put there. You go on the other edge here, and you go space select the subdivs, and it's going to uh, you know, put the number of, of edges that you have there. And you can create like uh, perfect patches, right? Because, for example, if you're gonna want to connect this all the way here, right? Let's say let's say something like this, and you want this to be like straight edges, right? You're gonna go on top of this when it turns red, which my uh, stuff doesn't work that well. And then you jump here, select the subdivisions, and you're, he's gonna make sure that you have 
uh, the perfect number of uh, of subdivisions, right? Well, I was in the move, no keyboarder. That was bad. again basic uh, basic tools. And then once you get accustomed with them, will make your uh, retopo very very fast. I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys will give it a go you know uh, topogun3.com uh, it's where you can get the beta if you have a uh, topogun2 license you can uh, use that uh, for the for the beta and you'll be able to save your scene and export if not at least give it a go and try the tools and uh, you know make sure you support the uh, software developers because they make these freaking amazing tools cheers